This is the toughest wilderness survival I've ever seen. 12 champion contestants return to challenge survival in a snowy mountain at minus 30 degrees Celsius. The campfire is buried in snow, and boiled water freezes right away. The only solace is sleeping in the shelter with a breathtaking view. It's the eighth day, and the weather is bitterly cold. Heavy snow falls outside the shelter, and they nearly lost control last night. In the middle of the night, heavy rain began pouring down. Wes's shelter couldn't keep the water out, and the freshly boiled water froze almost instantly. They had to keep the fire burning all night to stay warm. The wind outside howled like ghosts. They huddled inside, their teeth chattering from the cold. Jeremy and Grandma Zishi wrapped themselves in blankets. Snow had put out the fire in the shelter. Without warm-up exercises tonight, they might not survive the night. By morning, it was still raining, and Wes, too scared to go out to pee, hadn't slept at all. The wood supply was nearly depleted, so they sent Germain to gather more. Wood was their most valuable resource today. Even moving a log to the sheltered door was freezing. Baz's shelter, housing two men and a woman under blankets, was the best, but they still felt freezing. Jack kept adding heat to the blankets, but it didn't seem to help. Over at Kai's group, although the campfire was covered in snow, Joey could still smile. Who wouldn't be happy sleeping with two girls every night? Trisha's group had it the hardest. Jeremy woke up thirsty, only to find the boiled water had turned to ice. Their shelter felt like the outdoors, with snow piling up at the bed's foot. They huddled under blankets with Grandma Trish daily as it snowed outside. Their shelter didn't even have a door. I've seen lazy contestants, but never this lazy. It's like they were matched to win by doing nothing. For contestants living in a woodpile like them, I hope the blizzard gets even worse. The wood is right there but they won't even start a fire to keep warm. If it were me, I'd be doing warm-up exercises with Grandma. Grandma Zishi is here to win by doing nothing. At her age, she can afford to, but the young guy still has some pride. She decided to get up and check the traps. She came here to survive, not to nap with Grandma daily. She was already frustrated that the show paired her with Grandma. Why do others get stunning beauties with long legs, and she gets Grandma, who just wants to win by doing nothing? You can see in her eyes she wants to kill the cameraman. Jeremy went outside to chop ranches. What is she planning? Maybe she's planning to improve the shelter? Tracy is forced to help too. The snow keeps falling heavily. If the shelter is not perfected, it is estimated that tomorrow the program team will come to collect the corpses for them, and they have collected a lot of branches. As Trish brought the branches back, her feet went numb in minutes, and Jeremy's bird froze solid. It was even worse than coins. Trish hurried to start a fire inside the shelter to warm up, while Jeremy worked outside to reinforce it. He also planned to build a door, or else the night wind would give me a headache. We agreed it was necessary since the wind had already blown through. Our shelter needs an upgrade. Is this the right size? Yeah, it is. Soon, a shelter was quickly covered with branches by Jeremy, but it wasn't enough. Jeremy continued to gather more branches. The tighter the shelter, the warmer it is, and the Gillamai are so cold that they don't feel it, and they boil water with blood. Day 9 dawned with heavy snowfall. The Vaz tribe stayed huddled in their shelter, too scared to go outside. Jack's foot injury remained a constant source of pain. When he went out to fetch water, he checked the stream. He saw a fresh layer of ice forming on the stream. After returning with the water, he planned to hunt squirrels. Jack grabbed his slingshot and ventured into the woods, having heard squirrels while fetching water. Meanwhile, Vaz stayed busy. He noticed plenty of wax mushrooms in the water and decided to make a shrimp trap, similar to a fish trap. Hopefully, they'll catch some food. Sarah isn't idle either, she plans to hunt a rabbit. The whole Vaz team is very proactive, but they haven't had any luck yet. Sarah is confident they'll soon have roasted meat. She looks for rabbit signs in the area. He discovers numerous rabbit droppings, indicating a frequent rabbit path. Sarah sets a trap there to catch them. She camouflaged the trap with branches, surrounded the area with wood, and set up a pathway with snares along it. If the rabbits go through the snares, we might catch them. But I don't get. Why would the rabbit come in here? Is there some tasty carrot inside? I still hope Sarah can enjoy a meal of roasted meat. Wes's group, made up of two men and one woman, is pretty lazy, always staying in the shelter to keep warm. Why is there such a difference in enthusiasm? The temperature swings wildly, prompting the crew to check on the contestants' health. You can picture how brutal the weather is. I recall the last time the survival show crew checked on the contestants. Back then, there was a once in 60 years flood that submerged the shelter at Jiansipa. Those contestants were truly miserable but incredibly strong. This time, they are also experiencing a blizzard, so the crew is checking their health. It would be bad if someone died. 
In continuous cold, the heart rate speeds up. If the heart rate stays above 100, it becomes potentially dangerous. Joe fainted from the cold a few days back. Now, he's really worried about being disqualified. After his checkup, Joe's heart rate shot up to 130 and his blood pressure spiked, putting him at risk of a heart attack. Sarah's blood pressure is high too, but overall, the contestant's conditions remain stable. The doctor assured Joe they would keep monitoring him. If his condition worsens, they'll make him leave right away. Joe must also watch his health and stay hydrated. When Sarah heard she might have to withdraw, she burst into tears. Jeremy, after resting in the shelter, went out to check the traps again. She hasn't eaten in nine days and craves roasted meat. The small stream is full of fish. Despite having a fishing hook, she can't catch any fish and feels utterly hopeless and uncomfortable standing there. Even urinating is painful. The birds are huddled up tightly. How could it not be painful? She always returns empty-handed. Hunting is tough in this cold. Tracy can only boil water in the shelter. Jeremy is miserable because he can't urinate. He feels miserable lying in bed in broad daylight. Wouldn't it be better to go for a run outside than to lie here? Tracy suspects Jeremy has a bladder infection. If they lose another teammate, she definitely won't be able to stay. The snow keeps falling relentlessly. Kai's group had grilled fish two days ago and is the most comfortable right now. At least they've had roasted meat. Joe's health is not good. Gary is very worried about his condition. Although today's checkup was a bit scary, Joe still decided to go out hunting. It's still snowing outside. The two girls backed out, but she stepped up. She's quite a tough one, standing there in the heavy snow. Joe trembled and struggled to breathe, longing for thermal underwear. She aimed to catch a rabbit for food. She went into the thicket to search, hoping to find a rabbit, but what puzzled me was why she deliberately exposed her backside. Sometimes, the contestant's actions baffle me. After searching in vain for a rabbit, she saw the weather worsening in the distance. Kai hurried to gather wood to avoid freezing at night. Wes chopped wood outside while the strong girl cried for hours. Wes knew Sarah well. Although she wanted to win by doing nothing, she could endure hunger. Wes decided to go hunting. Finding some food would boost her confidence. Wes and Jermaine explored nearby, finding many bones on the ground. These were likely left by a cougar. Jermaine found a plant here that acts as a vasodilator. In cold weather, blood vessels tighten to keep the core warm. Breathing in this vasodilator would reduce her blood pressure. Simply put, it reduces blood pressure. Jermaine brought it to the shelter for Sarah, who quickly fashioned a straw. She planned to smoke the flower. In civilized society, this is not used, but it's common in indigenous tribes. In short, it's addictive. Watching him smoke while his teammates shivered outside was disheartening. After a few puffs, he felt quite at ease. He eagerly awaited the doctor to measure his blood pressure now. Jack planned to explore the west side, a new area for him. He saw many footprints here, signs of animals running. It seemed like traces of a chase. Following the footprints, Jack found a wolf. It looked fresh, indicating how cold the blizzard night was. The wolf had frozen to death. It had a lot of meat, and Jack was incredibly lucky this time. The wolf had plenty of meat to sustain them for days. Jack hauled the 50-pound carcass back to the shelter for his teammates. Next, they planned how to butcher the wolf. Finding a wolf in a survival show was a first for me. I have to say, the props team knows their stuff. They roasted the meat in an iron pot. After nine days without food, they finally had roasted meat. It tasted amazing, like steak, at least for the next five days. They can have roasted meat daily. Jack's doing a bit of barbecue down here. Pretty exciting. It's the first food that I've smelled in. Lunch and dinner out there. Backstrap for lunch. That actually makes me super excited. I've only had it in a stew. That's kind of exactly what I thought it was going to it's kind of like when you get one of those, I mean, it's not like, I'm happy, I'm happy about, about it. About I can't it. even shoot that. Right, right now, it's, I'm not going to run home and shoot, shoot me when I cook it up. up. Over at Trish's group, Jeremy's bladder is bothering him. Trish fears he might drop out, but all they can do is hope it improves. Trish is also forced to go out and work. She went to check the traps and reset them. Catching a beaver would be ideal. Jeremy is curled up in the shelter, keeping warm by the fire. Their group is struggling. Trish found a big patch of cattails. She plans to dig up some cattails to eat. The roots are rich in starch and, when cooked, are similar to potatoes, providing 80 calories. But Trisha's shovel can't dig them up, so she had to give up. Every night, they go to bed hungry. Vaza's group is the most comfortable, feasting on roasted meat even as a midnight snack. Being full helps them endure the cold. Their group is bouncing back impressively, while Wes's group considers a rat a luxury. Everyone else seems to be starving. Except for them, who are enjoying a meat feast. Tonight, they are fully satisfied. It's the 10th day, and the weather is great. Kai's group is gearing up for an early morning hunt. The doctor checked on Xiao again. His heart rate remains high. 
The doctor advised him to keep drinking lots of water. They can't keep a contestant with such a high heart rate here. Kai and Gary are worried about Xiao. Originally planning to hunt together, Xiao had to stay in the shelter to rest while Kai and Gary went hunting. Wes and Jermaine are also out hunting. Sarah isn't feeling well and has to stay in the shelter. All she can do is drink water day after day. Wes found a lot of cacti here. They plan to collect the cacti to eat. Their dam isn't catching fish and the snares aren't trapping rabbits. Now, finding cacti feels like a stroke of luck. Trisha's group is struggling the most. Progress is slow each day. Their main challenge is keeping the shelter's fire going. Jeremy went out to look for cattails. He set the cattail patch on fire to melt the ice underneath, making it easier to dig up the roots. Jeremy tried digging with a shovel but found no cattail roots. Their potato dream is dashed once more. Although they can endure hunger for 14 days, just lying here to win the $100,000 feels wrong. Jermaine returned to the shelter with the cacti. Today, they finally had food to eat, which made Sarah very happy. They cut the cactus into small pieces and roasted it in an iron pot. They caramelized it and then added water to cook it. Although the food wasn't plentiful, it was their first meal here. Having something to eat was quite good. They quickly finished cooking the cactus and it tasted very good. After being hungry for 10 days even cactus tasted delicious. A doctor came to re-examine Sarah. If her condition improved, she could stay. Fortunately, Sarah was able to continue in the competition. Sarah, who once cried countless times daily, could now smile. They were thrilled to stay and keep competing. Kai and his team went to the cafeteria to fish, hoping to eat grilled meat. They had the fire ready, but the doctor came again. He needed to check Joe's health again. Joe's heart rate had been elevated for several days, and if it continued, he would have to leave. The checkup showed a result of 14.8, so for his safety, the doctor decided Joe had to leave the competition. Even though Joe wanted to stay with the two girls, he had no choice but to go. This time, it seemed he really had to go. As the happiest man there, he had enjoyed 10 wonderful days. What surprises will they bring us next? Don't miss the next video update.